transforming the B2B buying experience. Our facilitator is Kevin Asher. With over 20 years of sales and marketing experience, he helps companies win by modernizing their sales force to become more awesome through technology and technique. Welcome. Thank you, Gene. Great to be here again. So your theme number 10 is interesting. It's a recap of 2018, but it's also predictions of what's to come. That's right. We wanted to get ahead of the year-end recaps and the best of lists and figure while people are still perky and energetic early on in Q4, we wanted to tackle this now. So it was very, uh, very interesting to see what was on people's minds. And uh, your panel, again, very diverse, very international. Very diverse, very international. We've had some rotations in and out, so we've seen participation continue to increase. And yes, and just wide variety of thoughts, perspectives from both the buyer and seller. And that'll come through in a moment as we start going through the details of what came up on this topic. You talk about trends, trends, and more trends. Very, it's very trendy. trendy. It's very, very trendy. trendy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We're going to make the most of this. So our panelists went pretty big this time. I didn't give too many restrictions or constraints. And so I ended up for the probably the, the first and frankly only time on this panel, we veered a little, a little to the edge of what was really related to sales and marketing. So I put that under the global and macro trends which interesting food for thought. And while I, I personally may have some skepticism about whether or not those things will come to pass in 2019, I don't have any doubt that on a three to five year horizon, some of these global and macro trends are going to affect us very directly in all aspects of business. And then the other category, a lot more near and dear to what this panel has consistently been about, which is sales in this new age and particularly sales as it relates to marketing. Great. So let's get into key point number one. I was surprised to see so much about climate and water being such big issues here. We have a global perspective, and these were coming from some of our global panelists. And so, boy, if you live in an area of the world where you're starting to see really dramatic impacts of global climate change, I guess it doesn't surprise that it's top of mind. But as you can see in Famita's uh, second quote, while it's not direct to sales right now, I think she does have a valid point that certain businesses will survive and others will thrive. So let me give a very specific example. I live outside of Reno, Nevada, and there are lots of companies that are relocating from the Bay Area because of the high cost of living and other high costs of labor and all the high costs. Uh, get them to leave the Bay Area, then Reno, Nevada, not very far away in very friendly business climate in the state of Nevada. However, that can become an issue over the coming years of how much new business relocation can areas like Phoenix and Reno really start to support because at some point, water bills and resource bills may start to tip the balance of cost of doing business. So again, these issues are not as tactical and down on the ground of, hey, what do I do to make my sales skills more authentic? But again, in a, the spirit of just you know yearly reflection, these sorts of things, I'd imagine, have got to be on the mind of global multinational CEOs, because at some point, these things are starting to affect business. If nothing else, hurricanes, storms, just these are increasing in magnitude, which increase insurance costs. And the direct day-to-day -day impact is starting to be more seen. You know, it's interesting because when you go to key point two, it's a very different issue, which is, you know, the value of data and bots. Some would see it as a threat. Some would see it as a concern. And others would see it as a great asset. And in key point two, it looks like you're really looking at the positives that come from that technology. Well, in sales, it's I, I firmly believe it's all about mindset. So these changes are happening. And just like every disruption and change throughout time, uh, Salesforce likes to refer to these changes. Salesforce company likes to refer to these changes. They're trying to dub it as the fourth industrial revolution. Well, whether it's an evolution or revolution, there's always winners and losers when rapid change happens. And so our mindset our control is how do we take advantage and be not not just survive these changes, but thrive. So I'd say it's indisputable 
that data and analytics is transforming everything, everything, not just business, not just sales, but our lives. I mean, my gosh, I was watching the World Series last night and the amount of data that they're capturing, uh, you know, just automatically of exit velocity when the ball hits the bat. And my gosh, the ability, the starting pitcher, his win loss when the umpire is behind the plate. I mean, just data drives everything now. So it's how do you use that to, again, ultimately drive a more authentic, a more meaningful experience for the buyer and for the seller? Because as much as numbers are becoming more important, we are still human. We will always be human. People don't buy numbers. They buy on emotions. But the numbers will help you understand and uncover what's happening and in, in spot trends where emotions are driving decisions. Uh, and That's then funny the, you'd bring that up because just today, and of course today is October 29th, you watched the World Series, but then also we learned that IBM bought Red Hat, which is you know a, certainly a market leader in analytics and data, right? And, absolutely. And uh, $33.5 billion for that company is in some ways staggering, right? Staggering. Salesforce bought MuleSoft, a recent IPO at the time, for $4.5 billion. MuleSoft essentially connects disparate data sources to be able to make this stuff more integrated. I mean, that is where the investments are coming. Mm -hmm. And then the second part about digital transformation. I mean, again, one of my clients, a global leader in their field, still does so much of their business development on spreadsheets. I mean, <laughs> it's a countdown timer, yeah. uh, your expiration date. Now, I'm old enough to know that we were talking about how mobile is going to be the next big thing for about 10, 15 <laughs> years. And then it was, <laughs> and now mobile, it really is here. We used to talk about AOL probably still makes millions, if not tens or maybe even hundreds of millions on dial-up. So, you know, Isn't that trends, <laughs> that's right. Things do take a while to die off. But mm -hmm. my gosh, if you're a company and you're not digitally transforming your business and integrating the information that your sales, your marketing, your client success, if you're not capturing data, you are living on borrowed time. I mean, guaranteed. So those are the trends that we talked about. And then basically over 2019, that the data, the analytics, the digital transformation and integration, it'll just accelerate. And if we have, there were some people, some things that I didn't put on the slides, people talked about the market turmoil, talked about the effect of US-based tariffs and global trade. Well, you know, 2019 may very well be a time of market turmoil. And again, like rising tide floats all boats. So companies that have been behind on their digital transformation, on their data and analytics, again, those vulnerabilities become a lot more poignant if we head into a down cycle. And you know, there are always going to be companies that thrived. I mean, let's not forget Salesforce.com launched in the ashes of the dot-com bust. And look where they are today. Right. So it's always a great time to start a business mm -hmm. if you provide something of value. And in sales and marketing, we are the lifeblood of corporations. Without revenue growth, there is nothing else. And so those who lead and add value to the sales and marketing process will always be in demand. It's just the bar is higher. And so all the posers and the also rands and the me too's, they'll perish. But you have something of value. And the value is increasingly knowing more about your customers than they know about themselves you will continue to thrive no matter what the global or the industry environment. Gosh, this is such a really, really great conversation, Kevin. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, uh, tell us about these top three panelists here and what made them stand out. Yeah, so Mina and Joanna, both international perspectives and had a lot to say on the global. And then Olivier was uh, very, very insightful on the sales and marketing specific theme. So they've been with this panel for several months now and uh, really thrilled and uh, appreciative of their ongoing contributions. You had a great summary, number 10. Um, is there going to be a theme number 11? And if so, what are we going to talk about? Ooh, cue the Star Trek theme music. We are talking <laughs> about sales, the final frontier. Mm -hmm. uh, just what's left to learn about sales. If you had a ma magic wand and create something out of scratch that's still needed, an unmet need, an itch to be scratched, what would it be?
Got a lot of great contributions. We're about halfway through that, so stay tuned for the next summary of those conclusions. Oh, that sounds juicy. I can't wait. Thank you so much, Kevin. Great job. Thank you very much. That's Kevin Asher facilitating our panel discussion. With over 20 years of sales and marketing experience, he helps companies win by modernizing their sales force to become more awesome through technology and technique. That's how he makes it all happen. Good job. We will talk again, Kevin.